Hi, Valley Whispers Ambassadors. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Great. So um, today's topic is about like knitting, and no one brought their knit sticks or um, is going to be knitting, but I will do a small tutorial so that you will have the video and then you can work on anything you would like um, to show you quickly. These are a pair of warmers that I made um, over the course. It took me three years to make these and I had purchased the same color from the company and these are the two, they gave two separate colors. So um, this took longer to make because I used uh, skinnier needles like this. Now I have another pair that are smaller. They're this size. And this probably took uh, three months, four months to make this pair because I used bigger needles. So when you use bigger needles, you get through your pair faster. So I recommend bigger needles. I also recommend getting um, yarn that's super cozy and comfortable to because you work with it and when you're in when you're working with it you're the softer it is it's more gentle it, it feels really better this is a coarse this is a coarse um yarn and i don't know how it's going to come out this is one of those basic cheap pink ones that you just pick up and then if you get more expensive ones this is like wool you have to be careful with wool because wool, when you stick it in the wash, it just warps up. And then I think at the hand wash, I don't know how you're supposed to wash them, but this is not wool. And this is wool through the wash. It just, it starts getting all smushed and tight and you're not supposed to put wool in the wash. But when you work with wool, it's softer on the hands and it, because you work with it a lot for hours at a time and it feels nicer on your hands. Something like this is very coarse. I started working on this today. I got this much done in an hour, um, just starting one. And I realized that it's very coarse, so it's not, it's not so comfortable to work with. And I'm gonna have to work with it for a while and I'm like, you know. Uh, then a more expensive yarn that I had purchased, um, is this one I've been working on this maybe two years already <laughs> because uh, when you, the skinnier your sticks are the longer it takes but the prettier it is in the end you have these gorgeous gorgeous knit like that so I'll get you through the first basics so that if you're gonna bring it back we can continue if you want to start on your own pair something like this and I would it, it depend. I don't think we'll do long ones. We could just do the little knit tabs ones like that, so that we can get the repair um, quickly, maybe within three months, however dedicated. So, starting with your yarn ball that you're going to purchase at a store, like this, uh, I recommend thicker sticks. Not this is when I say thicker. Uh, you guys are different measurements than me. These are called 10 millimeter. And then when they're smaller, it's like seven millimeter. And then there's 2.5. This, these knit sticks were made these red ones here. And this is also a very gorgeous uh, knit. It was this size. When you get a knit stick, try to buy one because they sell them like pointy, pointy on each side. And you can buy a knit stitch, a knit sticks cap. Looks like this. And then you put the cap on because you want it at the end. What ends up happening when you start knitting, uh, if you don't have the end cap, it's going to slide off and you're like, Ooh, you have to start over. It's not fun. So my favorite, highly most recommended kind of stick are the, are the loopsy loops that are like this. Like one on this one. So then it ends up in the middle here. And then when you put it away, you don't lose your stitches. They don't get lost. And it stays in a circle. Um, this is my favorite recommended. This, thick, this size, 
uh, I don't know the number, versus this size, uh, this is going to make one faster. It'll make your leg warmers faster. But this is going to make it longer and recruit. They're really more um, luxurious when you get really skinny, but it takes a long time. And I will say on these little skinny ones, if you go for the big ones, these long ones, um, there's about 64. Write down the number 64. You would cast on 64. You'll know that later after. When your sticks get bigger like this, you're going to cast on like um, 30 to 32, something like that. This is, makes, these are numbers you want to write down because when I go over it, the skinnier the needles, the more you need to cast on. And I'm just going to do um, a sample of the get you started. I'm going to use these thick ones. This is 12 millimeters, what it says, 12. The plastic, um, I like the metal the most. What happens is if you get wood like these, when you're working on it, because you, you have to touch the, the tip a lot, and when it's wood, it starts poking into your finger and it's just, it hurts and it's uncomfortable. So the plastic ones, I don't recommend so much because when you're trying to push the yarn through, it's so difficult. It doesn't, it, you have to play with it for so long. And the metal ones are my favorite. So go for a metal, mid size. These are 13. Oh, this is a nine millimeter. Middle, mid size. My favorites are these round ones. So this is probably going to make a quick one fast. I'll do an example on this one because it's my favorite metal. Um, when you start poking on the tip, it, you don't feel it. It's just like, you, know, you have to poke on it to push things through. Okay. So what I'm going to do is have two metal sticks. These are nine millimeters. Just the numbers. That. And one more thing. I'm going to use the big yarn also. So these are going to be fat. I'm going to, then this is a test. I'm going to see by next week how far I got with these. If I can make one in a week, wow, that'd be amazing. Uh, I'm going from three years to make a pair of leg warmers. We'll see how quick this will go. Next, uh, next for this, you have your yarn. And what you want to do when you open up your packet is grab uh, you want to turn it into a ball. The cats love these. <laughs> you have to hide when you're knitting a good cat. So you start with your the beginning of the yarn. You just start making a ball. And make ball. There is a tool that you can connect it and then you can wind it up, wind it up, and it makes the ball a lot faster. These were made with the tool, I believe. And then this one, something like this, was made by hand. Maybe I'll start with this. Oh no, I'm gonna do the big yarn with this one. But since I'm doing a demo, I'm not gonna roll this into that ball. I don't know if I'll get to, I'll just work with this yarn and see how far it gets me. I am like a yarn collector. I think I have in my closet, like maybe 80 balls like this, all different. I just collect them, thinking I'm gonna be making these great things and they just sit there, and now I'm going to maybe get back into using them. What I find what happens when I start um, knitting is life gets really peaceful, and it's very relaxing, and then you get really determined because you want to, like, see the results, and it's the most exhilarating thing. <laughs> like, what, if I get, when I get to the end of this, I'm getting close because I have this much left, but I have to make the second one this is the first one, I'm going to like dance after because it's so much fun. Like you get, you're like, ah, it's like a work, work in progress and then you finish it and it's just amazing. So I'll go over the quick setup for the beginning of 
podcasting on, and then you can rewatch the video and then get started and then see where everyone is and maybe we can continue and actually make a pair of warmers. Um, so I don't know if we'll be switching into colors and stuff like that, but okay, let's just get started because we have other things to go over. So you start with your little, the end of your little yarn and for the leg warmers, you want to do the length of your arm and a half of your arm, length and a half. And that's where you want to have your, I'm going to say triangle. Now you're going to get your fur, your stick. Am I upside down? I don't know where the camera is. Okay. So that triangle that I showed you, you're going to be at that triangle, there's a triangle tip. And you're going to take your stick and you're going to put the tip of your triangle into the stick. Right here. Oh. I just, where's the camera? So you want to open up your triangle. With Of your triangle open up. So, if okay, you put this finger in, your other hand is going to grab it, and you're going to take your thumb and you're going to like open up your triangle. When your triangle is open, you're going to twist your thumb to go into that loop. And then you take the back one and then you it and let go. Okay. Okay, triangle twist. You want the other. So you have a triangle, you open it up, pull into the thumb, twist through, you're going to go twist around, and then the thumb brings it back in. A little bit complicated, but once you figure it out, it gets natural. Goes in, go down, and then the thumb has to go through. So again, And then that thumb has to bring it through. And you want to pass on, I'll say, very thick um, yarn. It's very thick yarn. I'm going to say, pass on. This one 24, and then it'll be thick, bulky. I think it's that 24 cast, cast on me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe 24. So, um, let me get you to the next step because once you figure that out, we'll be able to connect. So, So just 24, okay, you have 24. Now that will be, get you to the end of that piece of here. And you just want to leave that thing back in. Now your working yarn is that long piece connected to the bowl. This is all connected to the big bowl. This is the one you want to work with. 
you have to grab your other stick. The first knit, knit. Because you need to know these two terms. It's called knit, K N I T, and purl, P R L. So to make a beautiful knit that's going to look like. It. You're going to be knitting one row, curling the next row. Knitting one row, curling the next row. The entire row you're going to knit, and then when you flip it, the entire row you're going to curl. When you get to something like this, have that. This is um, your knit, 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 knit for four. Make a count of four. One, two, three, four, and then you go into a curl in the middle of that line. One, two, three. Four. You go back to knit. One, two, three, four, and you go to curl. One, two, three, four. So that happens all the way till you get to the end. And then you repeat it on the other side. And then it's you have to get used to what you're looking at when you're going to go through knitting and curling. You'll be able to identify it um, when you get there. Okay, so I'm going to just get into knitting. Which first row we're going to knit. And commit, you take your other stick. You're going to go through that first hole. And then you take that long string and you're going to go around. Then you're going to bring that knit, the other um, stick. You have to catch that little hole you made. That's your first knit. That's one. And then you keep going, knit. So it's two to front. Back around. Bring it through. And then back. Next one. This is so soft and slides really easy. I highly recommend the other ones when you have trouble. You have to have to poke on this end to bring it off. And every time you poke with the wood end, or if it's too thin, it starts getting the same. Actually, you take all the way through. Make sure you go slowly. It slides through your front. It's so much fun, you guys. And you know what? I've never done really thick yarn, and I actually like it on these sticks. I was trying it earlier on plastic, and I couldn't get, I couldn't get at this point on a plastic. You struggle to get things through. the metal one or go through. And then the last one. Now, the mistake I made when I was a beginner is I thought I'd just keep knitting all the way to the stick came out and messed up. Now, this next row is going to be called curl. So I have to flip my sticks, um, leave the tail, and you always want to bring the tail at the end. I'll show you how to do that. Make sure that it will end up in the same Now we just flip it. Now we're going to curl. What a curl is knitting, you went in through the first thing you got there. Now the yarn is in the back. To curl, you have to take your stick and you're going through the hole to the back. And if you take that yarn and you're going to it, and 
Curl is a little bit not, it's more, a little bit more difficult to mix, but you get the hang of it. Careful not to leave any leaves that they don't fall off. Like a mistake could be like those leaves could just pop off on you. So we started, well, I was already getting, you could stick, look how quick that's already starting. So you can just keep going. I'm going to have to start over because I didn't, I didn't have it on enough. Now you have that little tail, so that could be pink. You have the tail, so that could be hanging. What you want to do, put your stick in there. Always work in the same place. Since I pulled the last one out of the neck. And with that little tail sticking out, you go in, you take both strings, and let them go in. That's so nice. Just on that first one. And then the next one, you go back to the regular fold. And that's knitting. So that's going to get you straight knit all the way through. You'll have a little key knit all the way through. And if you want to play with um, rib, you want to get a ribbing. So it's going to look like this. And then each row kind of like that. You want to get a rib. Knit. I'll show you that one real quick because it's really pretty. I already knit two here. So when I mean knit and then curl, I'm going to curl two. I'm going to be back for a long one. Um, and then I see I have the extra on the box. Since there's three at the end, I'm just going to bring it all three. So now I'm just going to take it out. I'm going to take it out. 
when I took it back, you're going to see the big bubble. The big bubble. The bubble. The bubble. The bubble. The bubble. The bubble. The bubble. Uh, that identifies You were in a pearl. So to say the word pearl is a pearl. So, um, um, to continue on on this one. Okay, so when you see the bubble, that's not a pearl. When you see the bubble, it's a mint. Third time you see the bubble, you're going to mint. When I knit on me, when I get to the back one, I have to pull it. I'll do this last row and then you'll see how that all comes together. Bubbles to knit it, which means to knit it on the side. When you see the little bubble, you're going to bring it on. And then the last one, there's going to be two there because of that tail. You just get both of them. And that's the basic. I went two, two. I'm going to go back and forth. It's hard to see it right now. You'll see it more when you continue. So the warmers are, let's see, um, So halfway through that 70 rows, 70, 60, 70. But um, so I did right now one, two, three, four, five, six rows. If I go like 70, it was half. So 140 around will be the full one. And then I'm going to have to, when you guys get that far, there's a thing called cast off, and I'm gonna have to teach you cast off. I don't have it off the top of my head right now, so I, I'm, I'm not gonna show cast off and make any mistakes. But if you follow all the little instructions, you're gonna be at the beginning of a ribbed one. Um, I, this one has five knit, five, five knit. It looks really pretty like this. But because I'm using thicker yarn, I only did two and then two and then two. So you can do three and three, four and four, depending how much you want your, your little ribs. And that concludes the beginning of how to knit. And I gave you all my best tips 
over many trials and errors and no mistakes. You guys will have no mistakes because if you do it that way, you're, you're going to get through a smooth beginning, which if you start from scratch, you're, it's, I don't know, it's a lot of trial and error. <laughs> I had so many mistakes. But that's the final of how to make a nice pair of, of leg warmers. I can't wait to finish these. Things. Oh, so then uh, switching into a new yarn is another. Um, if you want to switch colors in the middle, uh, I could show you that right now. You take, oh, I don't have another set of yarn. I'll just use it. So you take another another ball, and she's going to start in um, at the beginning here. Like this. It's kind of like yeah. I don't know yet. I forget. It's not on, on the top of my head how I how I through in another yarn. But what happens is you'll start working with two yarns and then when you get to the end of the row, you always, you want to bring the same way you bring in the, the end piece, you have two yarns, you always at the end make sure to bring it with you. So you always have um, get through a row and bring that second yarn with you only at that end. Um, Okay, so just work on this one here. And if you get to, uh, let's say, because maybe we want to switch colors in. If you want to do, oh, I said 60, 70 is half. So if you want to start and do like 20 rows. Try and do, try to bring, try to get to 20 rows. Anybody who wants to attempt to do 20 rows of what we worked on today. And at 20, we'll switch in another color. So if you buy yarn, um, go ahead and buy two different colors so that you'll have two colors. Because it's, it's so much prettier when it mixes with the color. Okay, the time remaining is like a minute, but what, we're going to log out and then log back in because Abby um, wants to, I don't know why it's only one minute left. It's only been, gosh, time goes so fast on me. Um, just come back on and then we'll uh, conclude the Zoom.